Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, movie thoughts. So, the... I quite like the... The everything with Smaug, I mean, just the, the, the bit where he starts to wake up, like the, the eye is, it's, just, it's not even really opening yet, it's just visible, and, and Bilbo's there in the gold, and just, okay, okay, I'll walk the other way, and starts walking the other way, and then the tail lifts up, and some gold falls down, and you just see this huge wide shot, where like, Bilbo's just a tiny little speck, and, and the dragon goes from one end of the shot to the other. And Bilbo's like, okay, can't go this way, can't go that way. I'll, I'll go back this way, just quietly, just very carefully, takes step by step. And then the dragon moves, and he like sits in a position like, as, as if that's gonna make him like invisible. It's, it's just... It's this innocent ch children's logic, ch child's logic kind of thing of I'm not doing anything, no, no, not me. Just playing innocent and it's just, it's, it's really funny and at the same time it doesn't lose the seriousness of this dragon waking up around him and just, I mean some of, like I said in the review, some of the lines they give Smart, excuse me, where he says, excuse me, that his, well, he doesn't <laughs> say excuse me. He, you know, he's like my claws, my my teeth are like swords. My my claws are like spears. I am fire. I am death. You know, these are lines where you're like, no actor can make this sound intimidating. It just it's gonna sound silly. But Benedict Cumberbatch utterly sells it. It's it's amazing. He really just, yeah, fantastic stuff. And the way, you know, Smaug is basically like your, your slasher killer. You do not want to get within his reach. The most you can do is run, hide, maybe block his path temporarily. You cannot defeat him. There's nowhere you can go that he can't get to. And just... The whole way they do it is just fantastic. Some things relating to Smaug. I love when Thorin is clearly so messed up about the Arkenstone. You know, first he's gonna leave Bilbo in there to die, you know. I, you know, he's worth more than the life of one burglar. His name is Bilbo. And, you know, okay, so going in and you know, he's like, okay, so do you have the Arkansas? The dragon's right behind us. Let's go out. Do you have the Arkenstone? You know, and it's just the the madness in his eyes. And Richard Armitage, I'm pretty sure that's his name. Dude does great. I mean, whether it's the, the fiery, passionate, passion speech to the people of Lake Town, you know, you will all take part in the gold be beneath the mountain, you know, whether whether he's like dark and brooding and or whether he's just like, you know, determined to get the dragon. All of it just works. You believe that it's all this one person, this all this one character. And you know, both of them running from from Smaug and the way, you know, they get stuff to hit Smaug in the head and you know the whole thing. And they and the very ending the cliffhanger ending, you know, they, they make this huge statue out of all the, the liquid gold, you know, extremely hot gold, and, you know, it, it melts, it falls apart on top of him, and he's just like, you know, falling down, and, and 
lying still there and, and you know, they're just looking on and I'm, I'm just sitting there, has no one but me seen Alien 3? Of course, it's, and yes, it comes right out of, uh, yeah, so, anyway, yeah, just, I, I'm really looking forward to more of Smaug in the next one, but, uh, yeah, and, uh, I mean, you can kind of understand where Smile is coming from. I mean, here he is, you know, Scrooge McDucking this, you know, treasure vault, and in come these, you know, a hobbit and some dwarves to, you know, mess it all up. I quite like this thing of, you know, sort of a connection between Smaug and Sauron with, with the eye and the, the eye of fire and the, the, the thing with the ring where he's like where are you hiding? You have something on you, don't you? Something gold, but worth so much more and just as he's saying that, you know, the, the ring comes off, like, as, as if it's Sauron, and as if Sauron is calling the ring back to him. It's just amazing, and, and so horrifying. I, I'm almost certain that wasn't in the book, and it just, it's such a clever way of, you know, he thinks he has this power, he thinks, oh, I'm safe here because I'm invisible, he, okay, okay, he can smell me, he can sense the air around me, he can hear my, you know, what was it, footsteps, heartbeat, something, but I'm still invisible, no, I'm not invisible anymore, oh fooey, that just, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not good, now the, I love that they did actually give Tariel a, you know, the, the bit where, I think it's Feely, it might be Keely, for the record, whether I say Feely or Keely, I mean the guy who used to be an adventurer but then he took an arrow to the, yeah, yeah, that guy, when he's, you know, in the dungeon and, like, you know, Tariel just put him in there and he's like, don't you want to search me for weapons? Or find me Lucky Charms, and you know I could have anything in my pants, or you could have nothing in your pants, and I'm just waiting for her to say, "Should I go get the ruler?" So yeah, that's 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 good stuff, and you know she she follows him to to save him. I really like that the arrow that there were consequences there, you know, with the the poison that's gonna eventually kill him. You know, and just the the thing about you know, yeah, the the orc is there, and he's like, you know, talking about, oh, we we will take back power. You know, Thrand will. He's had enough of it. He just you know, cuts the dude's head off. You said you were gonna release him. I did. I released his pathetic body from his useless head, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 good. And actually, that reminds me when, when Smaug is all like, Ah, a hobbit and some dwarves conspiring against me. And I'm just like, does Smaug listen to Alex Jones? But anyway, Feely. And with the, with the poison in the leg, in the, in the lake town at the bard's house. And he's, you know, they're, they're trying to, to get him better, but... You know, the, the, that one of them, the, the dwarves gets the, you know, I, I gotta use this one to, oh, we, you know, we use that as, we, we feed that to, to pigs. Oh, and he runs out and, you know, grabs it out of the mouth of a pig. You're lucky that that pig is like, you know, that it can't get out of that pen, because you'd be in trouble, you do not want to mess with a pig. That's, yeah. Anyway, especially not one of that size. Anyway, yeah, the and and the 
Yeah. So so she, and you know she gets the 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 thing the the root. You know the the orcs attack Bard's place to get at the dwarves, and then Tauriel and Legolas attack the dwar the orcs because you know they were like tracking the orcs and just waiting for them to make their move, maybe waiting for them to lead them to the dwarves. Excuse me, and. So, you know, when orcs attack, the elves also attack. Also, quite cool when Legolas took on, I think it was Bolg, with, with the bulge. From here on out, in, for, for this video, perhaps through perpetuity, he will be known as Bulge. And, uh, yeah, when, when he took on the bulge and, you know, did a lot of damage to the bulge and the bulge, the bulge whacked him right on back and, yeah, the bulge ended up riding away. And, and Legolas, you know, you know he, he gotta have the bulge. And, yeah, so... Anyway, Tariel is like, you know, there to, to keep them safe. The orcs get, a, you know, like some plates in, in the face and, and the, the thing, yeah. And Tariel like goes up and, you know, heals him and, you know, afterwards, you know, and, and he's like looking up at her and, and I'm, I'm just like, I don't mind what knocks me out as long as I can wake up to Evangeline Lily right there in front. You know, with the 3D it was quite nice with the and, and the angelic lighting and the whole thing. And of course he's one of these lucky guys who when they get drunk and ramble, they're all like romantic and sweet, you know, and he's like, Ah, oh, you can't be here. She's off in another world. She lives beyond the stars. You know, and Apparently, when I get drunk, no, it's all about, you know, that horrible ex and getting into a fight and insulting people's clothing for some reason. Anyway, and, and the bit where they're like, you know, what we just, you know, I've heard tales of the, the healing ability of elves, what we just witnessed was miraculous. And, you know, of course we don't get to see it. I'm, I'm just figuring, you know, at some point if Evangeline Lilly's career goes all in the dumps, maybe the take will leak online. Just, you know, fingers crossed. Actually, no, no, fingers not crossed. I, I really hope she gets more roles. She did really well on this. Now... I really love the, the the hallucination, the the LSD woods of Mirkwood, where you know they're just running around trying to find the path, and like Bilbo looks back at one of the dwarves, and it's him. He sees himself. Okay, it just turns back, and then we see from behind, and nope, there's still two Bilbos. That's that was fantastic, and all of them were like, oh, you know, just, where is, where is up, and where are we going, and all this stuff. I wish it hadn't ended so soon. That's, that's one of the scenes I was talking about in the review, where they're in too much of a hurry to get the plot going. I really loved how, in the book, you really get lost in this, you know, just, where are we, where are we going, how, how do we ever get out of here? complete isolation and the movie really got that well but then it moved on to the next bit and yeah it I, I feel like that should have gotten some more minutes and another thing I can't quite put my finger on the what exactly is wrong with when we see the Eye of Sauron with the Necromancer, but there's something about it that just, to me at least, doesn't quite work. I think it would definitely help to me if it didn't cut to the next scene, but it ended in black, 
And then we get just a few seconds, then it cuts to the next scene, then it fades back in and we're in the next scene. And maybe it shouldn't have gone through the eye of Sauron so many times. It felt more like, you know, camera gymnastics, this is what we can do now, than something that really, you know, I, I kind of get the idea of this, you know, infinite just going in and in and just keeps going. Like the, the evil of Sauron never ends kind of thing. But it just did not... It kept going for too long, and then when it just cut right from that to a completely different scene, it was, yeah, it, it really didn't work as well as it should have. And, yeah, I think that if it had, like, gone through it maybe once or twice, and then once the blackness, you know, go go in to the, to the pit of the... I guess I'm still thinking about Evangeline Lilly. Yes. Once, once it goes straight into the pit of, of the black in the eye, then just let that absorb the entire screen, then black for some seconds, and then cut to the next scene. I really think that would have worked better. But I do very much like that they do the, the darker, you know, Empire Strikes Back kind of thing with Gandalf's a prisoner by the end of the movie. And... Yeah, I mean, he was doing well for a while with, you know, that, that white lightning, you know, bubble attack kind of thing. I mean, that thing's got several things going for it. It does splash damage, is an offensive and defensive move. He really looked like he had them. And then, like, you know, his staff gets all eaten away at by, like, fiery fire thing from the necromancer and the whole thing there, yeah, and I'm not quite sure, you know, if what exactly the connection is between, like, the Necromancer, Smaug, and Sauron, but there's, there's obviously something, like, I can imagine that the Necromancer is at least part of rising, ra raising Sauron from the n near dead to, to, to an eye. I don't think I'm going to use him f for a necromancer. I, I, I'd really rather have more than just an, an eye from trying to, trying to raise someone. And doesn't it take him like 60, 70 years considering when the Lord of the Rings movies take place? So yeah, there's, there's that too. Maybe it is a lot to, to raise from the dead. If you're a necromancer, when do you get a raise? I apologize for that. I will never be able to atone for that when I, I realize that fully. Now, the... Actually, that might be more or less what I wanted to say. As I mentioned in the review, Bard is pretty much the most interesting and compelling character in this movie. And it's just, you know, basically when, when the dwarves meet him, he's basically like, you know, Hansel. He's, he's offering, you know, he'll, he'll smuggle them in as long as you pay him. And... You know, then it looks like, oh, he might betray them, and no, oh, he's just pouring fish over them to, to hide them. And then he, once, you know, they get, you know, he's, he's properly helping them. He's, you know, getting them weapons, even though they're not happy with the ones they get, and, excuse me, all this stuff. And then once he finds out that it's Thorin, he's trying to get them to not go to the mountain. Because he realizes how dangerous Smaug is, and... And the townsfolk, you know, they think that just the goal will be amazing for them. That that's that's all they need. So you know, yeah, yeah, you know, never mind the danger. Just and you know, that is obviously that's one of the things that the 
one of the themes that the story is going into is that greed has to be overcome, and we see that in, you know, it's it's in part in these town folks, town folk. It's also in Thorin and his, you know, strong desire for the Arkenstone, and to an extent in Bilbo and his, you know, jealous. You know, he he wants to keep the ring at, you know, whatever it takes. So yeah, Bar Bard's trying to, you know talk them out of that, and then when the, the, you know, the couple of dwarves come back and, you know, need help from him, he's like, no, I'm done with dwarves, and it's like, you know, I shouldn't have helped you guys, I did not know who you were, I should not, I should, I should not have helped someone I didn't know, because now you're causing far more trouble than the money you gave me was worth, you know, I, my home is going to be destroyed because I was a generous soul, well, for a price, anyway. And then he's, you know, we need your help, Feely is, is injured, and then he's still like, okay, you know, come in, and, and yeah. And then he has to, like, you know, he tells the, the boy, make sure they don't leave, I, I know, I, jumping back a little. The moment he said it, I'm like, that's an awful lot of responsibility to put on that poor kid. How is he going to stop 13 dwarves from leaving the house? What exactly? And, and he goes, I'm sorry that I tried to... What was he going to do anyway? So yeah, and, and he, he helps them out. And then, you know, he like realizes Smaug might be coming back. Well, okay, and he rips the thing out of it. I'm, I'm just, you know, thinking... Those girls are probably thinking, Dad, what are we going to hang the, the, those, you know, pots and pans on now? Or whatever it was he tore down, you know. He's like, I have got to kill this dragon by myself, you know. Yeah, that's, you know, just a normal day in Lake Town. And, you know, he goes out and, and tries to do that. And just so much happens with this character. And he's in the movie for maybe a good hour of the overall length and yeah just so much happens so many different roles that he has to play you know there near the end he's suddenly descended of Girion he is uh, he has to bear that burden and that responsibility and they're like talking about how his ancestor missed with the arrows, so they can't trust him because he didn't, his ancestor didn't live up to it. So he has something to prove. And he's saying, no, this is not just a fairy tale, never mind what that dwarf says, son. This is not just a fairy tale, my ancestor did hit with one of the arrows. It knocked off one of the, you know, scales, and if I hit there, then the arrow will go in, you know. So, yeah, that whole... And, and we get visual confirmation of that through Bilbo, of course, with the, yeah. And, yeah, it's just so much happens there. It's, it's really great stuff, and, and Luke Evans does really well with it. And like, like I said of Richard Armitage, you really feel like this is all the one character. I mean, this is so many different things that it might end up feeling kind of MPD-ish, and it never does. It, it all feels like it's the one person and just in different situations or at different levels of knowledge about what's going on. Now, I quite liked that the dwarves got split up some. I, I really like when, when Thorin first blocks off Feely and he's like, no, you'd only slow us down. And you know, until he then follows it up, it really just sounds like I will not have you getting in the way of my treasure. You are not as important to me as my treasure is. And then, you know, he follows up, no, no, heal, rest, it's okay, we'll come back to you. And, and he's like, no, I, I want to go, and, and then 
Keely, I guess, the, the, the other guy, his brother, you know, comes in and says, you know, I'm, I'm going to say, don't be crazy, you're, you're coming with us. No, if he's staying, I'm staying. And then another one of them, you know, stays behind too. And then the, the comic relief one who's like, you know, the, oh, we can't find him. Well, we'll have to leave without him. And, you know, he's asleep under the table and he hears the, the horn thing. And he, like, wakes up. Oh, is it that time already? Psh, smacks his forehead into the table above. Gets up, grabs a glass. Drinks the, the you know, several... Just, it, it... Not just, you know, well, time for that later. Nope, just drinking and putting that. Then he leaves, you know, and he doesn't quite make it to the boat in time. And then he meets up with you and says, oh, were you too late too? And the... Yeah, I've already talked some about Thorin's... Yeah, him getting too attached to the Arkenstone. I really liked how they showed Bilbo getting... becoming too much... becoming too attached to the ring. When, you know, he loses it and it's on the ground and he moves all towards it. And it's the, the spider bit, you know, and this one... I guess it's also kind of a spider. It's like standing right by the the ring. And, you know, I think it's maybe like touching it a little bit or, you know, stomping in the ground so the ring moves a little bit. And Bilbo goes over and he murders this thing. Like, it's not attacking him. It's not backing away either, but it's not attacking him. It, it looks like it might be able to. But he doesn't just hold it off and then pick up the ring. No, he slashes and hacks, kills it, and then picks up his ring. This is my ring. And then afterwards he's like, what did I just do? You know, and it's like Gandalf said earlier, you are not the same hobbit who left the Shire. And he did find more than his courage in the goblin cave thing. And... Yeah, it's, it's a real, I mean, it's such a contrast to this polite, sweet-natured little hobbit in the first one, where just, you don't really, yeah, he's just, he's completely, he's, he's polite to a fault, and now he is murdering a living being just to make sure that he can keep his ring, you know, and yeah, it's, it's this, this same thing as with, with Gollum and, and Frodo, and it's, it's done really well, and it's not exactly a secret that Bilbo is more interesting than Frodo, because Frodo is just completely, you know, vanilla, white bread, and Bilbo does have some personality. And, you know, he does have a little bit of an adventurous side, even, you know, before anything happens. He is half, what is it, Took? Something like that. Half Baggins, half Took. Now, I suppose that about covers it. But, but yeah, I'm very much interested in seeing what will happen with the, the dwarves in Lake Town. Obviously, Smaug is headed to Lake Town. And, yeah, splitting the pack up like that, so, excuse me, so we have two more manageable sizes, and these two don't know what happens to the other, and, yeah, it's... That's, that's interesting. I, I quite like that. And it's again, yeah, we have more consequences this time around, where the first one was just a series of small encounters that didn't really have any lasting impact for the overall adventure. Now... 
yes, I suppose that is The orcs are still quite cool, and the the things they ride on war, wargs or whatever they're called. And yeah, I I I think it might have been a good idea to give to get Azog a bit more into the background in this one, where he is. You know, we find out that he is working for the the necromancer, and then he sends, you know, Bulge out to, you know, take care of the the dwarves, and, you know, I, I like the bit where he asks, do you still thirst for dwarf, for dwarven blood? And I'm just like, don't you all, you're talking about killing dwarves, he wants to kill dwarves, yeah, I did. Are, are there any orcs who are like, you know what? I've just about had it with killing dwarves. Can we just... Why don't you guys do it instead? Yeah, but... Yeah, I, I like that, that he gets to be a little bit more in the background. And then we get another sort of right-hand man, uh, a heavy... Azog is the face of the enemy, and Bulge is just kind of the 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 right hand of the the villain. So yeah, that that works quite well. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.